Now the Kraken is the big weapon that most people... Whoa, there it is. Hey guys, it's Adam aka Swimming Bird, and welcome to Splatoon. There is a ton of news to cover, with a new date finally set for Splatfest, and a major balance patch coming out very soon that should please players that fear the Kraken. Now, Japan already had their first Splatfest, Rice vs. Bread. Rice was victorious, but during that, the developers discovered that there were some major matchmaking issues, so they had to delay the other Splatfests. But with this new patch coming out in a few days, everything should be fixed. And I'll go into details about that in a minute here. Now, both the North American Cats vs. Dogs and the European Rock vs. Pop Splatfest will be on the same day, July 4th starting at 12 a.m. Pacific for North America, or 3 a.m. Eastern, and a little later in Europe at 1800 British Summertime, or 6 p.m. in the evening. These will run for 24 hours. Now, what is Splatfest, if you're wondering? It's this huge party in Inkopolis. You get to choose one of two sides to try to earn points in Turf Wars for your team and win Super Sea Snails, which are very useful. They expand the slots of your gear and allow you to reshuffle abilities with Spike over there in the alleyway. So you want to get as many as you can, but we are going to try to do that despite the big octopus in the room. July 4th is Independence Day in North America, so despite most people being off work or school, it is a major holiday to spend with family, so a lot of us are probably going to want to, you know, watch real fireworks with the people we care about instead of, you know, watching fake fireworks during Splatfest, even though it should be really cool. Now, despite that, I'm going to keep my promise to you guys, I will be streaming Splatfest starting at 3 a.m. on July 4th and I will do as much as I can. Now, if you can't make Splatfest, if you're not crazy enough to stay up that late, or, you know, you're gonna spend time with family, don't worry. There will be a video version that will go up, so you can, you can feel like you have seen it, and you know what's gonna happen, everything, just by seeing how I do, and hopefully I will earn as many Super Sea Snails as I can. There's only five ranks, and it only takes about 40 to 60 wins to get all five ranks, so you don't have to play that long. But it is a little unfortunate with the timing. I've seen a lot of people complain, but it seems like they're sticking to it. We've got only about a week here until that happens, but I'm still excited to stream and excited to compete. Now, Splatfests are based on both team popularity and the percentage of matches won, but the win percentage is worth double. So even if you say Dogs has less, less members than Cats competing, if we win more, we'll still win. And I'm going to be on Team Dogs. No offense to Team Cats, but... I'm going to stick with dogs, and uh, hopefully we will prevail. I love cats as well. I love you, Judd. There we go. All right, so I'm going to jump into some battles here while I talk about the patch. So a few days before Splatfest, on July 1st, we're getting Splatoon version 1.3.0, the new update. And it mainly has fixes for Splatfest, but it has some special weapon and gear balances that'll probably please a lot of players that are not big fans of some of the overpowered abilities and uh, special abilities. So I'll get into that in a second. But the main point is to fix Splatfest issues. So the team that wins Splatfest will get double their Super Sea Snails, but they wanted to encourage people to play and try to get as many as they can, even if they don't think they're going to win or uh, have as much luck doing that. Whoa, jeez, that was close. <laughs> so yeah, they, they added some new features, and the big issue, I think, was just that if you were matched up, or you were on a team that had more people competing on it, like Rice versus Spread, there were way more Rice players, it seemed like, so it was a little unfortunate that the Rice players could not always find matches to compete in. But now we are going to, uh, I forgot I had the Seeker there, but now we're going to be able to fight against our own team, and you will earn points towards getting your Super Sea Snails, you just won't earn points towards your team winning the Splatfest ultimately. So it's kind of a uh, trade-off there, but at least you'll be able to constantly find matches. And even if your team loses, as long as you get fourth or fifth rank, you'll get a few extra than normal. It should be very easy to get a lot of Super Sea Snails, honestly, because even if you just log on and uh, play a little bit, you don't have to get any experience to get two right off the bat, so that's kind of nice. And you can get 12 or more, depending on how you do there. Whoop, I missed him. There we go. Just rain the ink down. See if I can ink Zuka a little bit here. Gotta be careful when I'm on a tower to uh, 
not get <laughs> knocked off with this because it does have a bit of knockback. There's, well, I don't know what they were doing, but here we go. Here's a little tip. Jump and throw your seeker when you're on this and you can hit people all the way over there, but I don't want to do that too much. I'm going to make sure I got enough ink here. Oh, I fell off. That's all right. I'm using the Aerospray MG with the Seekers, so I get to uh, I'm gonna stand back and do that. Will that work? Oh, well, missed him. I'll try to get enough here to get that roller right there. I'm gonna go right over his head. I'm gonna try to jump up here again, but that didn't work again. I don't know what that one guy's doing down there. He's just kind of, maybe that one will hit him. Almost. He's just kind of hanging out right there. I can't quite get him from this range, but I'm gonna try to get over and throw. It seems like he's just like, being fodder for other people to run in and then they uh <laughs> they get shot by the uh the other player on his team he's like distracting other players but yeah so it should be good even if you can only play a little bit of the splat fest it'll be easy to earn those super sea snails and uh not have to worry too much about not getting into matches he's got his kraken i think but if i hurry i might be able to jump and uh throw one of those oh missed him He's hiding down there. Man, he's trying to get as much ink as he can, but he's having kind of a tough time getting over. Throw one down there to cover his trail a little bit. If somebody's on their way over. I see you over there. I'm trying to get up. <laughs> Only have a few seconds. You might as well just jump right in and uh, splat him up. Go, go, go. Get as much of this as I can up the wall, and there we go. Yeah, we <laughs> they might have lost a player or something because... I think we were just trouncing them. Man, the roller got into our base area, but still, geez, 70%. Let's see how we did. And I'll get into the notes about all the special weapons and gear and all those changes. There we go. Almost top of the team. Eight kills, error splats, and zero deaths. Not too shabby. Okay, so let's get into the nerfs to special weapons and gear. Now, the developers decided instead of buffing some abilities, they've nerfed some of the most popular specials and gear abilities. And this is a little controversial, but I think their idea is they want the abilities to be something that gives you a little bit of an advantage, but not too much, so that even if you don't have maxed out gear with all the best abilities or whatever you decide that is, you can still compete and you're not going to have a crazy advantage over any other player. Also, I think they want you to be able to use whatever fashion you want and not be too concerned about gear abilities. So I think that's why they did these changes. Now the first change, not really negative actually, a special weapon change to ink strikes. It had some inconsistencies about where it would lay down ink, especially I think on the splat zones here for Kelp Dome. We're on the perfect map to showcase this. And Kelp Dome had some things with the ink strike not necessarily covering certain spots or covering too much, so it was like, I think it was a little up in the air whether your ink strike was going to be useful or not. Jeez, oh, got an ink brush running around. Try to back it up and see if I can get him once he runs around. Speaking of ink strike, there we go. Look out, there's a brush over there. If I can track him, man, they're so fast. They're definitely tough to keep up with. There he is. She. Let's see if we can get him. Haha. -ha. Can't escape my seeker. <laughs> it's really going after him. Somebody trailing behind me. I think I can get that ink brush if I follow him in. There we go. Just gotta be careful. There's guys like above. There's guys below. They're all over the place. I've got my ink suka. Should try to use that here. Let's see if I can get it going and get the middle area because I think that's where they were hiding. Somewhere. There we go. I saw him. I see him. There we are. All right. So yeah, they, they kind of buffed the ink strike a little bit and made it more consistent. Now the Kraken is the big weapon that most people... Whoa, there it is. Man, everything is just perfectly timed for when I talk about it. The Kraken will now suffer more knockback from enemy attacks, so it's been nerfed quite a bit. You might not already know, though, that you can shoot the Kraken instead of running from it. I think running is probably a little safer. You can shoot the Kraken to get away and uh, or at least hold it off until the six seconds runs out a little bit longer if they have special duration up on their gear and that is one strategy that most people don't employ I think most people just run from it but yeah you can use that to keep the Kraken away and now it's gonna suffer more knockback from attacks meaning it should be easier to keep Krakens away from you let's uh, back it up and get my Inksuka going here there's that ink brush there we go if I can get anyone else the Inkzuka's got so much range, but it's a little tough to uh, make sure I'm always getting people with it. All right, I'm going up in the middle. Got to be careful. I only have a close range with this little arrow spray. They can get me from anywhere around here. There's one right there. Oh, oh no. Jeez, that ink brush is coming after me. Try to get enough ink and uh, 
Here they come. Somewhere. We got so much going on here. We have the Kraken, not quite as good as it uh, started out. Here we go. A couple more Inkzukas. There we go. That might have given us a little more terrain. Man, you can see the Ink Strikes back at our base. Doing so much terrain there. Let's see. Oh man, we lost it. I think, yeah, that's that's probably what they changed. Look how much more terrain the Ink Strikes seem to do on this map. It's a little weird. Oh, I got 941. <laughs> what a weird coincidence. All right. We got a little bit more to talk about, so let's do another one here. So what's interesting about the Kraken nerf is that we didn't also see a Bubbler nerf. Bubblers are going to be the same, but they're very similar. Bubbler, you can use that and help protect your whole team, which is really nice. It doesn't give you, like, an invincible attack, but you are very well protected. You can get shot backwards, just like the Kraken, if someone actually, you know, lays on the fire instead of running from you. But it's probably pretty rare that most people will do that. So yeah, the bubbler, I think we might see that as the new crack in here. Ooh, didn't mean to <laughs> go through there. Sometimes I squid to get my ink back, and I accidentally go through. There's so many little grates and walkways, catwalks all over this map. But yeah, I, I'm gonna predict the bubbler being the new weapon that it, or a uh, special that they might need to nerf in the future. We'll see though. So that's it for the special weapon changes. The gear changes, both the... Uh... <laughs> Both abilities I have on my shirt and my shoes are getting nerfed a bit. So Ninja Squid, you're going to move even slower using Ninja Squid than you do already, but that can be offset with swim speed up. So you can kind of, you know, play off that. Ninja Squid is such a good ability because you can just, you know, hide. That's the best way to get away from a Kraken, I feel like, is not trying to shoot it necessarily, but just going into a good spot and uh, and just hiding, and then you can sneak up behind them and, uh, ooh, okay, jeez, get ink striked. But yeah, you can sneak up behind them pretty easily if you just Ninja Squid, and then as soon as they turn out of the Kraken, you can get them that way. So yeah, I don't think Ninja Squid being slower is going to be too much of a nerf. I still think it's a really good ability. Now, Stealth Super Jump is another popular one that you can only get on shoes. Ninja Squid is for your uh, your shirt. Jeez, oh, hit that sprinkler there. Just trying to make sure it wasn't a person for a second. Back up, my friend. I'm going to send this in. Maybe that'll take out the... Nope, he jumped over. I'm going to try to get after him. Oh, there's a guy right there. <laughs> I'm going to try to push my way through. There they are. Get him, get him, get him. They were too preoccupied with my buddy. <laughs> Man, just splatting left and right here. They really have the middle, so we got to push in. So Stealth Super Jump was really good. It doesn't show where you're going to land. You've seen me kill a bunch of players by knowing exactly where they're going to jump in. Now that is the way that they've nerfed that a bit is that it takes even longer to Super Jump than it normally did. So got to be careful with that. Is my secret going to... Oh, he lost him. I'm gonna hopefully run around the or go around the corner there with that. Get him, get him, get him! There we go. Sometimes my seeker's not the best at detecting players, so I'm glad when I get a seeker kill. All right, let's hurry and ink this up. Oh, I've got my. Oh, I could probably ink Zuka the bubble. See, I pushed the bubble back a bit with the ink Zuka, so that kind of worked out well in my favor there. So you're right around the corner. Oh, I think I saw someone over here. Might have disappeared into the ink. So yeah, Stealth Super Jump, that's not one that I use. I use Ink Resistance up, and uh, the thing with that is that has been nerfed as well a bit. You don't get as many benefits. Normally you can kind of like squid normally through enemy ink and just kind of have a, have a pretty easy time doing anything in enemy ink. You don't walk as slow. Let me do it right at the end here so you guys can see. I'm just kind of squidding through it and uh, somebody inked it right at the end. But yeah, you don't... you are really limited normally without that ability when you're in enemy ink and you take damage, but you don't take as much with that. So they made its effectiveness with damage and movement speed reduced a bit. So I think it'll still be good, it's just not quite as good. And in the long run, I think making players have more choice in abilities and not feel like they have to use certain ones to compete is better. Thank you guys for watching. That's all the patch notes. Not really anything else other than they, they have fixed some content for more pleasant gaming which is a very nebulous Nintendo term, but kind of like the Smash Brothers patches, they say that, but I, I, they've given us a lot of details on this, which is nice compared to most Nintendo things. So I'm glad that they let us know all of these changes. I'm excited for the balance changes, and of course for Splatfest. Definitely check it out if you can, and we'll keep having more Splatoon content as long as you guys are enjoying it. Let me know that you are if you want to leave a thumbs up or a like. I definitely appreciate it, and I'll see you guys next time.